Norman Smith in Central Lobby, thank you very much. I'm joined now by the Conservative MP and former Minister John Penrose and the Liberal Democrat, former Cabinet Minister Alistair Carmichael, who now sits on the Brexit Select Committee. Welcome to both of you. Alistair Good Carmichael, afternoon. as you will probably expect, the Brexit Secretary David Davis will accuse you today of abusing the trust of the British people. And it's hard to argue with that logic, isn't it? I'm not going to start losing sleep about accusations coming from David Davis. It's all pretty predictable, isn't it? But is he you wrong? Know, look, I think the point about trust uh, from, from the referendum is an important one. And a lot of people were told that there were things that would be possible in the event that they voted to leave. We're now told that these things are not going to happen. And in fact, we hear from government ministers, Philip Hammond in particular, that they now want to take the government in a very particular direction. Mm -hmm. A small government, low regulation, low tax economy. That runs directly in the opposite direction from the promises that were made of having extra money to spend on public services. Remember the famous £350 million Million pounds a week we yes, were going during to get the for the campaign. NHS. So, you know, where is the respect for the result of the, of the referendum there? It all just shows, in fact, how you need to be a little bit careful when you come to banding around right. these accusations. Let's just take it step by step and is try that, and have the best, most mature possible debate. Is that what the government is doing? They're going to take Britain in the direction of a low tax, to use the phrase of Jeremy Corbyn, bargain basement economy? No, I think that is a, a, a fallback if it all goes horribly wrong, but I don't think that's what we're aiming for. And in fact, there's been a, a wide degree of cross-party agreement on trying to preserve things like workers' rights and so on and so forth. It's only if the uh, EU feels that they got us over a barrel and that they can sort of try and push us towards a dreadful deal is to, to make sure that people understand that a bad deal is worse than no deal, as right. the Prime Minister quite rightly said. Right, uh, and, no that is further, is well, and that's further down the line. But let's concentrate on the debate today and tomorrow, Alistair Carmichael. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be putting down your amendment, I understand, on having a second referendum until the committee stage no. uh, next week. Mm -hmm. So isn't it incumbent uh, upon you and your colleagues to at least vote through the bill on its second reading? Well, we have tabled what is called the reasoned amendment today. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes it clear that we decline to give the bill the second reading because it Why? makes no provision for a referendum. Because, as you said in your introduction there, the white paper that we have been promised is has not yet been published. Mm. And because the government has actually used parliamentary procedure to avoid giving uh, things like what are known technically as money resolutions and, and the sort, the, the government are still trying to do what the Supreme Court have told them they are not allowed in law to do, which is to sideline Parliament and to keep control of How themselves. is Parliament being sidelined in this regard? Because the government has only brought forward the bill. They've not brought forward the other ancillary measures that normally go with the bill. Uh, and that's why we are putting down the right. amendment. Right, except the there, have been, have, there have been 69 parliamentary debates on the mm -hmm. outcome of the EU referendum since the 23rd of June. Now, if anybody can really put hand on heart and say there hasn't been a chance for Parliament to scrutinise this decision, then really you're difference. being facetious. There, as you well know, Joe, there is a world of a difference between Parliament having general right. debates that don't have votes and then actually a well, meaningful debate of the sort we have today, which is the second reading of a bill. And that's All right. Well, John Penrose, where is this white paper? Um, we were promised it. I mean, David Davis, first of all, said it wasn't going to happen. Then we had Theresa May pulling the rabbit out of the hat at PMQ saying it is going to happen. You were a Remainer. Mm. Presumably, you would like to see exactly what is being set out by the government when you yourself said, I like the single market, is what you said mm. on the eve of the referendum. It means jobs when local firms export to Europe. So leaving would cost jobs. So you would like to see a white paper, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, absolutely. I was delighted when the yeah. Prime Minister... Announce, well, I, I want to see a white paper before the uh, before the negotiations start. Uh, that means it's got to be not done. before the article, of the, the triggering of Article Fifty. No, th that that I think means it's got to be um, out before the Article Fifty is triggered, which means before the the end of March or whenever it uh, whenever it comes up. Right, and you would support on the basis of your um, support for the single market. You would support a Liberal Democrat amendment to keep us in the single market. Uh, no, I wouldn't, because um, I was a Remainer, um, but I'm a Democrat first, and now we have taken a collective decision in the referendum. I happen to be on the losing side, but I respect that result, and that means that because we've taken that collective decision, I think it's up to all of us now to try and deliver it in the best way possibly that we can. The Labour Party, I think, is on the same page, or most of them. Right. Are you on the same page? I mean, would you put down an amendment along the same lines of staying in the single market? I think the key amendments that we want to see are twofold. Really, One is the degree of parliamentary scrutiny. What the government has done here, and the reason why you've got such a short time for debate yeah. in the House of Commons, which is unusual, is the government has spent £3 
three months in the courts, fighting the courts not to come to Parliament. That really is outrageous. Parliament should decide this. I don't believe whatever people's views were, remain or leave, there is a single member of Parliament or a single member of the House of Lords who doesn't want the best deal for the UK sure, in coming Sure, but the best the deal means different things to different people, does. doesn't it? I mean, do you no, support the Liberal Democrats on a second referendum? No, I don't support a second referendum, actually, because I think it's for the matter of the people to decide. It's not for well, that's now what you to do say that. that. Referendum, isn't no, it's it? not your... Actually, <laughs> and your record on referendums, Lib Dems lost the referendum on the voting system, it lost the referendum on the EU, and now it's calling for another one that's ludicrous. I think the key thing here is there must be parliamentary scrutiny... But there engagement. is parliamentary No, there scrutiny. isn't. All these debates that have ha we've had, all these debates and questions mm -hmm. have been about trying to get information from a government that never yeah. had a plan, has no information. What there needs to be built in to this legislation is reporting back to Parliament and working with Parliament and engaging with Parliament. That is missing and that's serious. Right. I, I, I just, I think it's, it's a false um, choice to, to start saying that some uh, parliamentary debates are more equal than others. Oh, come on, oh, well, Joe, that's ridiculous they're, they're, they are. No, there, there, may be, there may be votes on bills, there may be votes on other measures. Well, and the votes but, is the key. But, but, no, yeah. but no, uh, no prime minister, no government worth its salt is going to ignore a sizable vote on whatever, however it's framed. Even on the single market, even if there's a vote on the single market. These things matter because it tells you no. how parliament will vote when it comes to I a bill. I think that's ridiculous. It's that's crucial. a silly argument no. to make because all the debates we've had, all the questions yeah. have been trying to get information from the oh, government. Yeah. This was a government that agreed to put the referendum David Cameron said, I'll stay on and see it through, disappeared, and it's a government without a plan, and that's All right. what's yeah. worrying me. On that sure. basis, though, the Andrew Smith, can you tell us categorically that Labour lords will vote to trigger Article 50? Well, what's not going to happen, be absolutely clear, we're not going to block the bill, we're not going to delay right. it. So your vote, so your vote to trigger yeah, Article 50? Yeah, Article 50 will be triggered, In I'm quite the clear, Lords, yes. by the Labour But peers. what I will also say to you is this isn't a blank cheque for the government to do what Ooh. it wants. Theresa May wants to invoke Article 50, but the bill as it stands at the moment is inadequate, I think I, right, so I'm what will you do? Because well, you say you're not going to block the bill. No, you know the timing is crucial as far as the government yeah. is concerned, and you say you have legitimate concerns and won't give a blank check. What does that mean in practice? Well, what it means, first of all, we'll listen to what happens in the House of Commons. I would still be quite optimistic that the House of Commons, in its wisdom, will come back and have some amendments to the bill that brings in some parliamentary scrutiny during the process. Right, a quarterly if report to, to Parliament is one of the Labour that's one amendments. Of the, I think but, that's perfectly reasonable. But let me answer your question more fully, Joe. Yes. If then that doesn't happen, the, the only thing open to the House of Lords is to ask the, ask the House of Commons to look at it again. This isn't blocking or delaying, but say to the House of Commons, think about this and have another look. Now, I don't think if we get to that, that would be unreasonable, but if the House of Commons is to say that it wants that scrutiny itself, we would support them. Right, well, what do you say to that? So the Lords could bat it back to the Commons and say, think again before we trigger Article 50. What would you, that do to the timetable? Well, I, I it's think fine, so within the timetable, yeah. that's... That, that's, that's the, the crucial thing. I mean, it, it, I think if, if, this well, is a, if this is an attempt to sort of, you know, kick the thing into the long grass, kick the can down the road, then I, I think that's not something which the British people are going to be very enthusiastic about. Mm -hmm. If it's something which is within the timetable, then, of course, well, there's a normal, there's a normal I expect, process. Joe, that, yeah, look, yeah, look. I expect that's the normal process yeah. of legislation. All right. But what we'll the, no doubt see is some hysteria from some who think yeah. any questioning of the government on this issue is somehow a constitutional outrage. It would be a constitutional outrage not to have some questioning of the government on this issue. The timetable is entirely of Theresa May's own making. She was entirely. the person who, so, who chose the date for the triggering of she Article 50, of and she then chose to waste months in the courts, sidelining Do you Parliament, think it was a waste of time, John Penrose? No, it wasn't a waste of time. I mean, we ended up with a split decision, 8-3. Eight, eight, mm. It was at but least... Was it the argue, right decision? It was a perfectly arguable right. case, and it was, it was let, important constitutionally. It was legally on. arguable. To get the it right was answer. politically and constitutionally a disgrace for the government to try uh, and sideline uh, Parliament. Right, but in the, the end, in the end, the Supreme Court has said that Parliament should uh, get or say its approval, or give its approval to trigger Article 50. Trying can to I, the absolute well, minimum can I just come to you, though, on the Labour Party? Because you've said they won't block... Uh, the triggering of Article 50, but the party is split. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn has put uh, uh, an attempt forward to whip MPs to voting for triggering Article 50 in the Commons. What was the mood like at the meeting last night of the PLP, the Parliamentary Labour Party? I think the, the mood actually was a very encouraging mood for Keir, great support for Keir Starmer and we the amendments he's put through. And the main focus, I don't like really talking about Parliamentary Labour Party meetings in public, but the main focus of last night's meeting is the amendments that we are putting down, which actually unites the Parliamentary mm. Labour Party. But you've got 50 or 60 Labour MPs who are going to defy yeah. the, the party 
line. may well do. We'll see when the vote comes to end. But when we get into committee and we're discussing the amendments, there is really broad, strong agreement around those amendments of needing parliamentary scrutiny. Right. It's not about splits. It's actually about trying to get Parliament to have a say and not give the government But there is a, a split in the Labour Party. Yes, Jeremy Corbyn has been able to carry. The main issue is the amendments. Well, and there are splits also in the Liberal Democrats. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got nine MPs. How many of them can you guarantee will vote with the party whip to trigger Article well, 50? Delighted to see you. I'm no longer the, the chief whip, so you'll have, <laughs> yeah. to, you'll oh, have I'm to sure you're thrilled. You will have to address that to him. Right, but, except, but no. except, I mean, you've got Norman Lamb saying he didn't feel comfortable mm -hmm. blocking the triggering of Article 50. Greg Mahal has said voting against mm -hmm. Article 50 was a meaningless gesture, politics mm -hmm. and party political games. They're thinking of their constituencies. Right. There are divisions in the Liberal Democrats. I, I, there are divisions in all parties. But we think divisions we, in we, the country, we, we in know that, family. And that's everywhere. inevitably the consequence with, a, with referendum politics. They are highly polarising mm -hmm. uh, and they do create splits which then take a long time to heal. Incidentally, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important that we don't just say that the referendum on the 23rd of June was the last word in this. It was the start of a process. It's an evolving process. And at the end of it, the people having started the process, it should be the people through a referendum that, that are allowed to give their judgment on it and to end it. Why is the government so frightened of amendments that have been suggested by your colleagues here being put to the House and being voted through? Well, uh, there's nothing wrong with them being put to, ha put to the House, but I think that the real... But not voted through. As long, exactly. as, long as the House doesn't actually do anything with them. Right. But, but isn't that starting to debate? It's not sidelining <laughs> Parliament, it's having the debate. But I, it, the, the question is, are they good amendments and are they, is this the right bill for them as well? Because this is just a very, very simple bill saying, are we going to press the button to start the process? There's an enormous amount of further detail as the deal is negotiated, mm -hmm. as the details come out, where we will but this is have the key point, regular though, reports All of which is why whether or not they're in this bill or not, we're going to want to have we those reports have... back and, and make sure that, that the Parliament is kept informed as those things come out. That but will happen but the part... naturally on organic. All of which is anyway. why oh, we should have had the white paper before the bill. That's how it's, it works. You do your consultation first. When you've heard the views right. of people, you come right. forward with legislation. You need to you start the negotiation. First. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's time for our daily quiz. Yesterday.